All right. All right. Welcome, guys. So this is the call after the leadership call. So this is for the leaders. This is a call for our executive directors and higher in our organization. And basically, uh, one thing we started um, actually just last month was a, you know, FIBC uh, to NY, our uh, FNC, uh, Florida National Convention call, because mm -hmm. we have so many people in our business growing right now. So many new executive directors that have come on since the new year. So congrats to all of you that that applies to and those that have them in your business help and help create that is really this is an iteration and a process of moving towards um, you know fully integrated business coach and beyond and it's not just about the rank but it's about what you're building your business um, the equity you're building uh, the ripple effect you're creating and knowing our uh, our skill set and what we're doing here so we have this call because one of the most important things as you're developing leadership is to be able to pour into yourself. You know, you're never done. You know, you never arrive at a final destination. And I still, even to this day, the number one thing I love about our company is the mentorship. And we always need pouring into. So this call is for you guys. You know, we have all the way from brand new executive directors, maybe people that are even hitting by blended path for the first time to uh, presidential directors on the line. And this is for you guys. Uh, to be poured into so you guys can know what the next step are grow your competencies and just be like how many times has it come up it's been like I just didn't know that the high leverage uh, you know knowledge so this is what this call is here for so we have a few different things that will help you set up your month as well as uh, tonight we're gonna cover um, just some compensation details which I have the pleasure of doing that and it's always like how can you get through it and get the most information without keeping it like without being super boring so wish me luck um, Susan LaBelle is gonna cover an awesome tip we got uh, Lori Anderson who's gonna cover a tip on uh, creating referrals and we're just gonna spend about 25 minutes tonight doing that so I um, hope you guys have a pen and paper ready and um, help you uh, you know enjoy going through this in your business so before we get going I just wanted to also congratulate everyone we had our biggest month ever that we've ever had uh, in TSFL combined again and it's because you know one our our what we have to offer is so powerful and you guys see it we see the transformations going on in people's lives I mean you guys if you guys were on a leadership call how cool was that I mean just seeing all the people that have uh, you know grown over the years and what it means for their team and I want you guys to think about this is part of this being a leadership call for you I want you guys to picture yourself there you know and many of you guys are like oh I don't know if I could ever do that well if you do the small steps every single month and reach out people it's only a matter of time until you're there so I just want to give you that piece because a lot of people do talk like that and at one point you know a lot of the leaders that are on this line were like man, I don't know if I can do that. And one small step at a time, partnering with one person, pouring into another person, you can get there. It's all about what you do each month and uh, who you're helping and what you're setting your sights on. So again, the goal of this call is for you to be poured into, for you to have that like leadership uh, mindset and also just learning the duplication of our model being poured into and learning how to transfer skill set as we become leaders. So as, as we get started, I did want to give a props to, uh, we had uh, you know in our group here of EDs and higher, we had a couple new people join our ranks. So Debbie, Andrea, and Joey, new EDs this last month. Congratulations. Jim and Kanani uh, over there in Phoenix, Arizona, or Prescott, uh, they hit regional director. And then Allison Petty, a uh, new fully integrated business coach. So um, this is fantastic. And, you know, you can't always hit a new rank, which is great. And I want to give a lot of props to this, this particular group. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So sometimes we're like, oh, you know, we haven't done this. We haven't done that. That's why you want to be crystal clear on your goals every single month and what you're moving forward in the small action steps. Because I can tell you, looking at this group here, about a solid 95% of you tangibly moved your business forward and created more stability in your business. And like right now I can see Abby on, on the line. Abby, you had a new senior coach last month and you're growing your business. Like you are helping move things forward. So congrats to you and everyone else on the line that did something that moved themselves forward. It's all those little victories that add up. So Again, leadership. We're talking about leadership tonight. A leader is someone who demonstrates what's possible. Mindset and everything. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really big on this because I'm, you know, I have a, my first little guy. He's just turned six months. People don't care what you say. They, they see what you do. So a leadership is all about what's demonstrating what's possible. So with that being said, I want to turn over tonight's main topic on uh, setting up your month and basically inspecting what you inspect to Susan LaBelle, who's going to be talking on a few things that she's learned over the years to help set up your month, but also the different things to consider as you're inspecting your business and who you want to be helping and what you're doing. So Susan, are you there? I am. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm actually, you know, uh, first of all, just congratulations to everybody that's um, on the call. You know, just awesome job being here. I know there's 
new executive director. Some of us have been around a little bit longer. And I think that um, at any point in time, it's like, you know, sometimes when you're in process of something, you don't, you don't realize really everything you're learning. And, and, you know, I have conversations, Brad, I get the pleasure of, you know, mentoring with him. And, and sometimes I, I hear something come out of my mouth. I'm like, gosh, you know, I just wasn't there two or three years ago and where I am now. And the first thing I really want to share is something that's um, actually my mom brought to my attention because I grew up um, with my parents owning franchises. So they own businesses. And my mom um, kind of made the comment to me that they had invested, and this was, um, gosh, 30, you know, 30 plus years ago, $250,000 to start a franchise was what one would cost. And, and, um, and because they invested that amount of, um, up on the, on the front end, I saw my parents work, you know, nonstop. I mean, they were, um, they went, you know, I remember them having to leave for, you know, six or eight weeks to like learn to be trained. And then they'd come home and they'd work long hours. They get up, they do whatever it takes. My dad left vacations, you know, family vacations to go home and, and work the family business. And I think sometimes, you know, being around that mindset of just being a business owner, I have seen what they've done. But what my mom said to me is, you know, honey, it took us five years to really break even on a business like that. And we are just, we just hit our five year mark and take shape for life. And she really thought in, in a way that. Um, and what do you mean to get ready for? One second, I got you. I know. <laughs> And I am <laughs> There we go. All right. Um, you know, and it's, she said to me, she's like, you know, um, I'm amazed what you guys have done in just five short years is the way she said it. <laughs> you know, when you're in it, it doesn't always feel like short years, but I, looking back, it's, it is pretty incredible that from a $200 investment, and I think what sometimes we really lose sight of is because we didn't have to invest two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or four hundred thousand. What franchises cost you know these days on the front end? Sometimes we don't treat it like the business that it is. You know, this is this is a business that can give you really. Um, I mean, we all have different goals on the line, and we're going to talk on that tonight. Um, but it's really about creating whatever you want and you desire in your life. And sometimes because we only spent two hundred dollars. We can, we can treat it like a $200 business and not necessarily the people on this call. It's not you, but sometimes your team members, that's the way they're seeing it. They, they invested that it was, you know, it was, it was either this or buying a pair of jeans and they just don't see the value and what they, the potential that they can actually create with this business. And so really asking yourself first, like, do you treat it as the business of the potential and the value that it has and what you see for it, not the value, the, what you had to invest in it on the front end? And so the things coming up, like, um, you know, even being on the call tonight or listening, if you're listening in on, um, on recording later, this showing that you have value in learning and growing in this business, you know, those coming to convention, you guys are saying, Hey, there's, there's value in that. Like, you know, the potential of really the training and what this business can do for you. And so, um, you know, it's just seeing the little fruits of our labor, like the seeds that we're planting now and um, uh, thinking back and the, the people that are around, it's, um, you know, Brad and I had a call today with a coach on our organization that I met out at a play, on vacation at a play park, you know, three years ago almost. You just don't, you know, really realize all those little interactions and where they add up years later. So it's fun looking back because you can't always connect the doc, you know, when you're in it. You don't see it, but I can, but going backwards, you can connect the dots to, to where you are now. So just really want to really plant that seed for you guys is to really see what's possible with this and understand it's, it's, it's little by little, like Brad, you opened up the call saying that, um, to really grow into what you want. Um, Brad, do you want me to keep going? I think you have control of slides. Okay. Awesome. We're going to, you know, Brad and I talked today and, and we're, we, we figured we kind of go back to the basics of goal setting. Now, we've all heard um, the importance of goals, but um, I always get a little bit of a, like a quiver or a chill when I hear that because I, I honestly have to laugh that I'm the one that was chosen to speak on goals tonight <laughs> because um, I was probably the most resistant to writing down goals, um, the thought of having to do them. Um, you know, I honestly, I thought of them as a checklist. Um, I didn't see value in them. 
and I don't know if that resonates with anybody on the call. And all I have to say is, hey, I was there once too. Okay, I honestly, for the first year and a half in this business, I didn't write a thing down. Um, and then I had my wonderful husband who all of, most of you have met or known and, and he came along and he has a, a new value of goals. He'd been in industries where they wrote things down and they, they came together on a plan. And it was really by his encouragement that we started actually writing down and planning for our future. And what I've seen, our, how our business has changed and transformed since we started that process is pretty incredible. But honestly, now I love actually doing goal setting. And um, it's kind of an acquired taste where, and, and I think the reason, and Brad, maybe I've never told you this, is I think the reason I didn't do them is I wasn't good at it. And I don't, I don't, I'm not always comfortable with things I didn't feel I was good at. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know how to do that well. But here's the thing is you got to start somewhere. So if you want to go to the next slide, it's um, goals are not, it's not about being perfect, okay? This is not about... It's like if it's your first time, and it's okay if this is your first time, maybe this month, writing out goals. This is, it's not about perfection. It's just about deciding that, um, you know, we know the Apples and the Starbucks and the, the large companies of the world. They have, they have a vision. You guys, they have a plan. They have goals for their business. So understanding that you have a business of value to the, to the world and, and an amazing thing in your hands it's really just a matter of, hey, like, do I desire to grow? Knowing what I've seen and the people we've seen really grow this business, at some point, they're deciding to write things down, to have a vision, to have a plan as they're moving forward. So if this is all new to you, just start is my encouragement. Doesn't have to be pretty. I picked this little funny thing out because sometimes, you know, the first goals you write, they're so simple. <laughs> they almost seem silly or ridiculous. And sometimes they're they're not even realistic. Like a chicken's obviously not going to do Taekwondo, right? So it doesn't really matter. It's like, just start, like go half thought with it, write out the things that are important to you. So I'm going to go to my tips here, Brad, just kind of wrote these up. The things that I've learned, I'm going to give you my, um, that I used to think and hear my heart on this, but I used to think that my goals were for Brad and Ashley Miller. <laughs> <laughs> so that I wrote them down because they needed them. And what I've learned is that it has nothing to do with them and, and I'm thankful for them, but it was, it's really for me. And, um, and I do them faithfully and loyally. And some months, maybe I even forget to send them to you mid month, Brad, but I do them every mid month because it's not, a, in, it's not about Brad and Ashley. It's about, clarity for myself, um, focus, and going through the process um, for me, it's, it's about our business and what we're creating. So if you're thinking that, gosh, my support team really wants these, so I'll do them, like I'll put it on my checklist of things to do, um, I hope that in time you start to see value and excitement in doing them because it's really for you. And there's no wrong or right way. It's it's really what do you, you know, what do you want? Um, I talked on clarity. I would say also, um, you know, clarity too. I would, when writing goals, adding in your health goals, like we all know about taking care of ourselves first. Um, you know, do you have a health goal every month? Are you setting, um, and it's not, uh, you know, do you have a plan for where you're going in your health? We encourage our clients to do that. And we're all still clients of, this program, right? Um, what that looks like. So do you have a goal for yourself in that way? And be including those in your goals. I'll tell you that's been imperative in me being able to stay true and strong to what I desire and want in that area too, as that's still very important to us. Um, let's see here. Number three here, what did I put? Okay, SIS, the support mentorship model. I will say it does help when your support team knows what you want. We talk a lot about empathetic coaching. Um, again, it's, it also allows for them to, um, to give you feedback on where they might plug in or sometimes they have a different vantage point. We can have blind spots in our business. So they'll see things we don't see. It's good for them to see because we a lot of times have the relationship with our team. So they're going to see things, you're going to see things. So you, it becomes a collaboration on working together to bring real clarity and focus to your goals. So it does assist the, the support mentorship that we do have when something's written down so they have clarity on what you want and can really help you go, go achieve that. 
and really, um, this should be probably at the top, Brad, is like, don't beat yourself up because um, you guys, you some of you are brand new EDs and honestly, just welcome and awesome job. And like I said, I was 18 months into doing this before I wrote one thing down. And, um, and it's all baby steps. Sometimes it's just a couple sentences of a goal of what you want. And that's where we start, right? Um, some of you are further along and you're growing in this process. So you know what? Don't beat yourself up. Like this is, um, we, we want you to look at this business as fun. This should be something that doesn't take a whole lot of time. And in time, hopefully you do find value. And like I said, I actually enjoy it now because it's just, it's part of what I'm creating. And um, clarity on what I'm creating is, is um, actually really exciting. <laughs> and um, so I'm, I enjoy the process now. Can you believe that, Brad? Probably over there like laughing that this is me these days. Um, another great thing I've really learned, and this was encouraged from Dave and Terry Miller from the beginning, was really consider a different end of the month day. So um, I used to be working um, the 31st till midnight, you know, to reach 6,001, you know, to barely get over the line. And we started shifting our thinking to what if, what if we set the goal for the 30th or for this month, the 29th to be the end of the month so that on the 30th, I could just enjoy my smiley faces, you know, have a day of celebration, time with family, and actually set the pace to turn a new leaf over to look into July, for example. So you're setting up the next month because what I found myself doing was losing a few months into July. Like I would work so long and then I really wasn't looking at July till the third or the fourth. And so hence I started the next month behind too. So, you know, this is just a mindset of what your month looks like. And I'll tell you what you put your mind to, like it, it's kind of like whatever you put your focus on, it, it comes into fruition. So as it, because so many of you, whether it's a 30 day month and many of you hit goals on the 28th of February, right? Because there's only 28 days. So we can do what we put our minds to in the time frame that we give ourselves. So try it this month. Say, hey, the 29th, or maybe it's before that last weekend of the month. Like you are looking to really over exceed where you're at. And, and then I started setting goals um, for hitting senior coach on the first day of the month. Like I just, I, that used to feel so far off, Brad, was to be a senior coach on day one. And then next thing I knew, we were hitting ED on day one. And I was like, that was exciting. It was like, and, and, our, and hasn't happened yet, but one day we're going to be hitting global on day one as we help and assist other people on our team to set those goals and be moving their goals up so that there's freedom in the month to really go create what you want. It's not like you're rushing or doing anything inauthentic to what you desire and want. So just a kind of a mindset and hopefully that's helpful. Um, let's see. Um, where am I? Assessment of V Slims. You know, Brad, you've really trained so many of us on the success tracker. And I'll just tell you, this is just good business practice to to um know where you're at, um, know what you're looking to create and have a plan to be able to kind of go create that that month. And I find that the people that are doing that, there's actually a lot less stress, ambiguity, like confusion in their month because there's just clarity on this is what I'm looking to, to be able to create. So if you're not using a success tracker yet um, or you're not even aware what it is, um, you know, ask your support team. Um, and I, I would say, you know, we utilize those for forever and our team utilizes them and i would say until brad would you i mean people on our team until they're probably above ten thousand consistently maybe that's not like part but they because they've done it but the only way they're ten thousand consistently is they've been using success tractors consistently for a long time to be able to create that sort of volume so understand it's a good business practice and really that feeds into the next one is you want to model for your team so we're talking about transferring skill sets tonight if you aren't writing goals down and it's not your like your thing yet but what I really learned is I desired to lead from the front and I desired to lead a team and how was I gonna ask my team to do something that I wasn't willing to do or at least learning to grow and learn in and you know you you guys have all heard it's now it's you know first your sport team's gonna do it you know for you then with you so if you're new to goals write some goals out your sport team will do that with you help you formulate what that might look like or your success tracker and eventually you will be doing it on your own so you can then in turn go teach it one day to your to your team and to your to your coaches that you're supporting so 
if you desire to grow as a leader in this, in this business, it's just one step at a time. It's starting to learn, working with your team to learn how to do it so that you one day can do it on your own and you can also teach your team how to do it. So that's really where the success tracker is. It's good business practice. You're, you're going to want to encourage your team to do it. So it's something you're going to really want to learn and, and embrace as well. Um, and then last um, but not least is really, um, you know, having a strategic plan of um, understanding, like, who are your players? Like, we, the people on this call, we're working towards um, new levels of growth and leadership in Take Shape for Life. And, you know, are you, have you laid the groundwork of the people that you're, you know, grooming and layering on and, you know, kind of scouting in your, in your world, who are the people that are kind of your first string on your basketball team, right? That you're looking, not your bench players, but who are your first string? And are you intentionally spending time in their world, you know, this summer, this month to really, um, you know, model and show them what Take Shape for Life is all about. So, you know, do you know who those people are? Like, are you, do you have complete clarity on that? And are you working with your support team on how to really develop that into your organization? So from a goal setting standpoint, those are things that we, you know, strategically lay out every month. And um, I'm a visual person. I say that all the, all the time. And that used to be my excuse why I didn't write down my goals. And now I realize, wait a minute, since I'm such a visual person, why am I not putting them down so I can visually see them? Um, and they are, they're up on a whiteboard and I look at them every morning and I, you know, I actually pray over the people in my, you know, on my, where I should be spending my time. And I feel like I gain clarity every day on um, who to touch on and love on. So um, hopefully that's kind of what I have for you today. And, and, and that's just really what I've learned over the five years. So Brad, have I come, come a little bit of a ways? <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're always in process of becoming the person that we are becoming. I don't know if that, I mean, if that is not overly, um, you know, <laughs> profound, but we are always in process and that's what's really cool. And that's why we have this call. So Susan, thanks for hitting on all those things there. It's so good. And you referenced a lot of the things that we've learned from David and Terry over the years. And, you know, just one thing to take away from this as we're doing this call, and this is kind of why we do it in this sequence. So for you guys on this, on this call right now, check you guys out. You guys are leaders. Like literally, I want you guys to like take a second and be like, oh, not me. No. Yeah. You, you guys are leaders on this line right here. And it's this mindset that we're growing here that I want you guys to own on this. And the number one skill you can take away from this is I want you guys, it's so good to inspect what you expect. You know, taking off the last day of the month, knowing you want to finish up early, you should be enjoying your smiley faces and thinking about all the people you're helping on the last day of the month. I want you to picture yourself kicking back with, you know, whatever it is you want. I like pina colada, you know, optimal health smoothie myself and enjoy all the people that you're helping and then already thinking about what it is you're creating for that next month. And have you already on that last day of the month, have you already scheduled time to connect with your support team to plan out where you're jumping in with your team this month? So, um, you know, you mentioned the success tracker, take 30 minutes out. And this is what you want to teach to your team as they're growing in leadership. You know, this is not for a new coach. They don't need to know this stuff. They just need to know how to be working on their first five. But have you set up your success tracker? Have you looked at your B slims? Do you know what your projections are? Do you know how many clients you want to start this month? Do you know where you're working within your, you know, your five legs of business, um, whether you're working there or you're working to develop them every single month? And are you connecting with your support team to do that? Take 30 minutes out, guys. You know, Susan, the biggest, so take 30 minutes out because it's so much easier to work the month with a plan and clarity and knowing what you're growing and where you're taking action rather than jumping in. So the reason why we did it, uh, this, this call, because this is the skill you want to learn. And if you guys, if you guys are sitting there, many of you, I can see, you know, uh, some of the people on my screen right now, I know you guys have already done it. I've seen some of your goals. Some of you guys would be like, whoops, I'm, you know, new to this whole, like, you know, being like, you know, a leader thing and you know, where I'm at in this business, I haven't done it yet. It's not about being perfect and you should never, another leadership thing here is, uh, you know, Susan said, don't beat yourself up. This is like, Hey, I'm growing right now. So that's why we have the support. If that's you who haven't done goals yet, it's not too late. Grab so I had a few goals come in this morning from a few people. It's still good. So that's why we have it right here. And, you know, project where you want to be on the month. And I like it this way, Susan. You really, really, I love hearing this. It's probably one of the best teachings that I can ever really, um, uh, you know, hope to learn from anyone or hope anyone will learn is how are you viewing what you have in your hands? You know, what, I mean, you know, Susan, you compared your five years into what your parents uh, view as five years into a business. And I went out with a good friend of mine, actually a good friend of ours uh, became uh, ours from the person we buy our cars from. And he's actually the number one, um, or he's the number three 
um, you know, I don't know what you call it, but you know, basically, uh, they, they're not a large dealership, but they work like on, um, you know, luxury vehicles and, um, they, they deal like, yeah, I can't, I don't know. Anyways, they're a dealership and he, he's really good at what he does. And he's like, and they have a young uh, child too. And they were like, Oh man, it's so great to be able to connect with you guys, not only to be parents together, but you know what it's like with all the hardship of going through business. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. This business has been awesome for me and I've never had to leverage money. I've never had to like mortgage my house. I've never had to do any of that stuff because this business has so much value. It's all about how you perceive it. So he's looking at me thinking I've got something amazing. And most people would look at him like, oh my gosh, he's a successful uh, car dealership owner. So it's just that perspective and what you have in your hands. Just because we had, we paid $200 for our business doesn't mean that, you know, it's not the same business someone would have paid $250,000 for. So thank you, Susan. I just, I love that so much. It's so good. And it really comes down to one of the books we want to cover as we go through this is how successful people think. I mean, you know, I can see a lot of you guys. I mean, do you guys love that kind of, that kind of insight from people? Abby, you're, you know, you're nodding your head right now. I, I love that when people raise up what, what we think is possible and how we, uh, and how we do that. So here's a few tips that we want to give you too, as you kind of go into this month and, you know, maybe passing on to your team. Uh, Lori, are you on the line tonight? We're going to have you kind of hit on some tips that help create referrals because referrals are the key to expanding, you know, different spheres of influence. So are you on the call? I am. Thank there you, you are. That. Go for it. I am. Thanks. Um, one thing I want to uh, touch on, um, that Brad was just talking about books is I love reading and listening to books. So um, Brad has awesome ideas. So hit him up if you um, want to be listening to some books on tape. So um, anyway, um, I would just wanted to talk to you a little bit about referrals and um, referrals is, are just a, a great way to help grow your business. Um, I, I enjoy getting referrals and, and enjoy talking to my clients. Um, and it's really talking to them right from the very beginning and just layering all the way through um, as you're watching their lives change and, and changing their health that you kind of posture on that they're going to be, um, people are going to be watching them and seeing them change and they're going to want what they have. And so it's really important to um, talk to them from the very beginning on how to talk to other people. Um, so some of the things that I tell them is, that um, if they just tell them that they're on a, a health and wellness program and that they work with a health coach um, and just to, you know, have them give, give them my information or what I really like is if they're on Facebook, if they put us in on a group thread and so my client would introduce me to their friend and say, this is my coach that I was telling you about. And so it starts the relationship um, with them. And then I, I'll, I'll friend request them and um, start, you know, seeing, seeing them and, um, commenting on their Facebook posts. So, um, that's one thing. And, um, I like to, you know, just concentrate on that. That is the goal of mine. And so I, you know, put sticky notes up and just so it's, it's in the, the back of my mind where whatever I'm doing that I'm looking for that. And, and it seems like whatever you're, Whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're putting out there is what you're going to get. So um, just be thinking about that. And, and it's interesting because I actually, um, after I talked to Brad um, tonight, I got a text from somebody that is not even a client, but she wants to get her sister healthy. And so she has been talking to me. My friend has been talking to me, wanting to have her friend, her, her um, sister, get information from me. And so she just kind of touched with touch bases with me and just told me that she, um, she just keeps talking to her. So who knows, but so referrals don't necessarily have to be from clients. It could be from friends that you know, that, um, that know what you're doing and they just want to help other people. So, um, let's see. Um, oh, and I, I love to offer my clients a thank you credit that um, when, they, when they refer a friend, I just let, let them know that I will um, credit their account and I call it a thank you credit. So, um, and you could give whatever, I, I normally give $25, but you know, whatever you, you like to do, but it, then it helps them to make it worth their while to, you know, listen to what, to what I say and, and how to word things to, to benefit them and to help their friends as well. 
That's awesome. Thank you, Laura. These are okay. great tips because I know one of the reasons why I called on Laura is because, you know, you consistently start a lot of people every single month. And what's great about this is, you know, we're just kind of we're helping each other each have a leadership mindset on our business. And one thing that's really important and you do really well is creating referrals. And I love it because, you know, we don't get referrals. We create referrals and you do it by investing in a relationship, layering it and finding out who's interested. It's a relationship deal there. And I love that what you said writing it down because one of the, I mean, the best tip I've ever given anyone on creating referrals that I've actually just seen the results on is, or any, and for myself is when you're making your calls and touching base with your clients and putting down goals for a month, just write down a big goal is to create referrals, you know, because when we focus on is what we create. It's not about getting referral. You're not trying to get someone to give you something. You're trying to partner with someone to bring other people into your world. So phenomenal job. And thanks for the reminder. This is such a great thing to remind people of as they start their month and asking themselves, I mean, not only thinking about it, but asking yourself, how am I doing in the referral department? Because every client that you're helping right now has a doorway into hundreds of people's lives. And I mean, and if you're also creating referrals, you're creating a mini health coach. So you're just kind of moving that forward. So thank you, Laura. And it's such great tips. So, um, these are the tools that we want to go over to just help you kind of, you know, think on your month, you know, where are you at with these? So, you know, always sponsoring is always a huge one. We talked about how referrals help, uh, help move those on. Um, but you know, how are, is your list? You know, Susan challenged everyone to have a list of at least 20 people that they're looking at that were offering the trilogy to at all times. How are you looking on that list? Uh, you know, are you constantly scouting and layering on your dream team week to week? What are you doing that was more than last week? And it's such a great way to look at that. And just remembering to keep it super simple. Um, you know, how are we moving our ripple effect for it? You know, five and one can change the world. If you literally, you know, can start five clients and layer on one coach and create one coach a month, do you realize what happens over the course of, you know, over a year? You know, the people that are, you know, talking on the call tonight, I love the leadership call tonight because I knew most of those people win when they were just like little itty bitty people with like stars. And I was like, oh, I'm at my first event. And all they did was just, Focus on helping people, you know, one person at a time. So use your support team to help you get into action. The other reason why we talked about setting goals at the beginning of the month is asking yourself, all right, where am I jumping in with my support team? So that's why we talked about, you know, finishing up the month early, planning out what you want to do next and connecting with your support team because it's like, who are we going to jump in and start helping you go? Because you have support that wants to help you do that. And where is your next competency? Most of you guys on this line, you guys are growing towards FIBC and developing executive directors. So you know, where do you and your support team want to jump in to help you do that? Remember, none of this stuff, you should always ask yourself, it's not just what am I doing? What am I grabbing my support team and doing? Because you should be working. That's how we want to work within our business. And so I wanted to cover compensation real quick as we wrap up. And this is the boring topic, so wish me luck. But a lot of people have a lot of questions on it, and we just don't really have a great avenue to cover it. So I just want to go over it real quick. We, there's multiple ways that we get compensated and I wanted you guys to see the numbers so you knew how to explain it. Because I get probably calls four or five times a week. Like, I don't understand really how we get paid. I just know it's really good. So this also helps in the line of, you know, understanding, you know, where you want to put your time. Because this is also a business, too. This is a business of creating health in people's lives. But it still is something that funds our lives. So we want to make sure we inspect what we expect with it. So um, as a health coach, we get paid on our frontline volume or this is how it works. So it's all on every 1,200 in frontline volume that we generate. As a health coach, you make 15%. And if you're certified, you get an additional 3% on top of it. So as a health coach, you make 18%. Then it goes up at 5% um, to um, at senior coach. So it's 15% plus your 5% plus your 3% certification. So at senior coach, you're making 23%. And then every rank on that, it goes up an additional 2% on, on you know, what you're paid overall. So at manager, you're making 25%. Associate director, you're being paid 27%. At director, you're making 29%. And at executive director, you're making 31% between you know, your, your health coach compensation, your growing bonuses, and your certification. So that's how it works. Those are the breakdowns. Everyone gets paid 15% uh, baseline, no matter what. Then you get 3% for being a health coach, and then you get paid no or depending on what uh, rank you're at. And that's how the percent grows from there. So that's how, the, that's how the pay difference works. You also get, um, um, another way we get paid is assist bonuses. So every time you bring on a coach and you help them earn their cab, their cab you get paid $100. So there's another way that we get paid. We also get paid for rolling bonuses. So just for being certified and every three months, this is another way that income comes in. So you know, for all of us, we're all executive directors on the line. So every three months, we make a $1,000 bonus. 
But for people on our team, where they're at, like if they're you know growing towards executive director, they may be making a five hundred or a two hundred and fifty dollar bonus. So those are other bonuses that we get paid. We also, this is why we're having this call at Fully Integrated Business Coach. You get a thousand dollar bonus every three months, just like you get paid your rolling bonus. So this is another form of compensation that we have. Then this is how it works on your team. So everyone that we're bringing, I mean, the goal is to be having five to six legs of business that we're working with moving forward. In the beginning, you get paid the difference between where you're at in compensation and where your coach is at in compensation. So say you have a health coach, basically, and you're an executive director. You're going to, because of the bonuses you get, you make 12% on all of their orders until they reach different ranks because that's your compensation on their orders while you're helping them gain the competencies to grow their business. And obviously, as they start to advance, they're going to grab the other bonuses. So like, you know, someone moves over to manager and they're creating and they have a 6%. Now you're only making 6% of their business. And I say only, and I don't even really mean only because now you're making less of a percentage on a higher amount because you shouldn't be having to do as much in their business and you're helping them move forward in their business. So you're getting paid to help them develop. You get paid more in the beginning because you're spending more time with them. You're helping them get off the ground. That's the reason why the compensation works this way. And so you make the difference in where you're, where you're at to where they're at in compensation. And that's how it works all the way till when someone reaches executive director. So executive director, you're not getting paid less, you're getting paid more. And that's why you get paid in that flow. Um, you know, and differences there so that you can get to a point where someone is moving on in their business and then you make two and a half percent of their entire business. So I know this is a lot of numbers, but basically it breaks down that at regional director. So that's like, so say you have your first coach who's an ED, you make 2.5% of their entire group volume. So not just, you know, 4% or 5%. Now you're making money on their entire business and their ripple effect. And as they develop and create executive directors and you advance, this, you know, advancing in ranks will confirm that you will get paid in debt. So, you know, at, at a regional director, if you have an executive director on your business that's bringing on coaches, you're going to make two and a half percent of their entire business. As you advance, like, you know, say integrated national director, you're not only going to be making um, income on their business, but all the way, these are levels down. So, you know, that person that you sponsor becomes an ED, they sponsor someone that goes ED, you're going to get paid on all levels down of your business. And then as it goes down lower, uh, and deeper in your organization, um, it goes down in levels. So as an integrated national director, you get paid 2% um, on your third levels of EDs. And the reason why, this is why we have, we talk about five levels of business because you want them rippling out. You want their effect to be rippling out. And the more people you help, the more you'll get paid on depth in your business. So that's how the, the leadership ranks go. And you guys will understand that more as, as you're moving along there. And then we additionally get paid uh, percentage on bonuses for being national, global, and direct uh, and, and presidential director. So for hitting national director, you make an additional 0.5% of your entire organization, your entire group volume. At global, an additional 5% or 0.5% on your entire group volume. And then presidential, another 0.5%. So as you're growing wide, you're growing your business, growing the stability. And then as you hit leadership ranks, you're making additional compensation on there. So I just, I know it's kind of boring, but I wanted you guys to start to kind of comprehend the numbers and I, how me seeing this for the first time in a Dan Bell presentation, honestly, my eyes glazed over, but I started to recognize the numbers there and it started to make sense the more and more I talked about it with David and Terry as I was planning out our goals and explaining compensation to others. So as we're all moving to gain, you know, a really stable business that's, you know, that's helping people. I wanted to kind of point out an example of what a fully integrated regional business at a very novice level does. Um, so let's say you're supporting, you know, a good handful of clients, about 9,600 of frontline volume. Your income from that, because you're making 31%, is going to be $3,000. At a fully integrated business coach business, you're going to be making, you know, one of your bonuses probably every single month. So there's $1,000 because you're either having an FIBC bonus or a rolling bonus. Uh, let's say you're bringing on a coach, you help them get their cab. Let's just throw in an assist bonus because generally there's probably one of those every single month if you're doing your five and one. And then let's just say you have a bare minimum of five legs that you're working with just off the bat. And let's say they're somewhere anywhere from senior coach to manager. Those four legs of business, they're going to be $900 of income right there just because you're making the difference of where you're at, your ED business, and where they're at in their business. 
So that's roughly about $900 for your growth bonus from your team. And then let's say one of your five legs of business is a growing executive director and they have, you know, they're growing their team and they have some coaches on their team. Let's say even they're close to FIBC. That's where that two and a half percent comes from. And you make two and a half percent on their entire business. And that's possibly about $500 right there. So you have one leg of business that's making you almost half as much as four legs as they're developing. That's the strength of what you're building. And just because sometimes talking about numbers can really kind of bore us and talk and about this, remember that this leg is touching way more lives, creating way more uh, people getting healthy than, than you can even imagine in that. And that's what you're trying to build over time. And that's our different compensation so that, oops, I went too far. Is, so just at a novice, fully integrated business level, you're making about you know fifty five hundred dollars a month. That's you know that's where you're at. So just so you can kind of understand the different ways we're getting paid. And here's just one more way I like to pass on to people. A lot of people will be like, well, you know, this money trickled in here, this money trickled in here. Oh, this money got paid here on this week. Oh, and my bonus check for for this month is at the fifteenth of the month. The way it's really beneficial for you to look at your income on your business that we were talking about is look at what you do in a month in a thirty day period. What will get you compensated for that? It's no different than when we had jobs, you know, and some of us still do have jobs. We would work two weeks and we would get paid a certain amount for those two weeks that we put in. Look at your business the same way. In a month period, you're going to put in a certain amount of time, a certain amount of effort. What comes out of that? And then, you know, gauge, gauge what you're doing with that. That's the best way to look at it. And if I, if we're just passing on skill sets, I want you guys to be thinking about that is you look at, well, what is my compensation for the work I did this month? Not well, this little bit of chunk of money rolled in here, this little chunk of money rolled in here, this little chunk of money rolled in here. And I say this also because one of the things we teach on is healthy finances. I literally had someone not gauge what they were bringing in and um, they literally, when their tax, uh, uh, um, uh, their uh, W-9 came in, they literally didn't know where all the money went. They didn't, they didn't spend any less, they didn't spend, or they didn't do anything differently and they just spent it in because they weren't looking at it. They just looked at it just, as just extra money showing up in their bank account. And then they spent it all, didn't really realize anything from it. And they were just like, oh, I just thought it was extra money that was just trickling in. So little money can add up, especially when it's a lot of money. It just all depends on how you view it. This is another leadership mindset that David and Terry taught me that I want to pass on to you on it. So that's compensation. So hopefully I didn't bore you guys on it. And hopefully it's helpful for you guys to see the different forms of compensation and start to commit those numbers to memory and understand where your compensation is being paid from. And the one thing I love is that when you look back at it, it shows you that by helping others is it, it just literally everything is married in our business for helping others. We get compensated very well and helping us grow a stable business. And that's what we want to do over time. So that's pretty much what we have for you guys tonight. You know, the goals, you know, focusing on what we want to create, understanding compensation and just growing and knowing that this is a business and spending time investing in something. And it's all about how we see it. So as we wrap up tonight, I just want to talk about convention and just a little bit of prep because we're one month away today. And I just wanted to have uh, global director Don Chow come on and just kind of share a little bit real quick as we get ready to uh, get that set up. So Don, are you there? I am Brad. Hello. All right. Thanks for jumping on. Happy birthday. Ah, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, you guys. So I am excited to get to talk about convention. <laughs> it's kind of like my thing over the last few months. Um, I swear after one convention's over, I already start, um, planning for the next one. Like I get so excited. It's like Christmas, right? Like, okay, countdown to Christmas, countdown to convention. Um, we are exactly one month away, which is really exciting. Um, I know everybody on this line, you guys are leaders, you guys are the up and coming, you know, business leaders and FIBCs of tomorrow. So that's really great. I know that all of you have had a conversation with your support team about convention, right? So I know that, um, my support team has reached and talked to me. And of course the question is, have you talked to all of your, the people on your team about convention? Like, have you had a conversation with every single person and not only just all your coaches, what about your pre-coaches? What about your clients? Does everybody on the entire East coast who's even a client or pre-client of yours know that you're going to be coming there in like four weeks and that this event is open to everyone. So, um, some of my favorite things about conventions, some of you, this might even be your first convention because that's how awesome, um, you know, take shape is and that, um, you know, so if it is your first convention, okay, Brad, I'll remember to have fun. Sorry. <laughs> Am I having fun? <laughs> no, you are having fun. I think you are. Um, but so this might be your first convention. So some of you might be like, well, okay, what's convention all about? Um, it is the biggest event of the year. 
Um, Brad, I don't know if we know, you know, kind of what the numbers are looking like, but there's going to be, you know, 3,500, 4,000 um, take shape for life. Amazing people that are going to descend upon Orlando. So Orlando better watch out and better be ready. Um, there may even be more than that. And, uh, you know, the neat thing is it's open to everyone so we can have clients attend. We can have our friends and family come with us for sure. All of our coaches and especially anyone who's a new coach. Uh, I know that we got to hear last week from, um, Andrea on our team, how just her first convention after two weeks of being, um, a health coach was amazing. And, you know, now she's a uh, regional director with, you know, many EDs on her team. And it's just really exciting to see what this event can do for us. So conventions, the largest event of the year, meeting of the top minds, the top leaders, um, the energy there is contagious. So basically the questions, not are you coming, um, but who are you bringing with you? Um, and I remember Brad once said, so unless someone's coming into the world or going out of the world, <laughs> we need to really think about um, coming to convention and what's possible and how we can get there. So a few things for um, those of us on the line, all of us who know we're going is just prep and some tips for coming. So uh, you may have lots of people on your team that it's their first time, their first time coming to an event. It, this might be their first Take Shape event. Um, it might be their first uh, convention. And for some of us on the West Coast, it's, you know, a little bit of a flight. And so helping them prepare for traveling with this awesome business that we can for sure take with us and we can do a lot of our stuff on the road but with convention and and actually really um, any event it's really nice to be able to you know get your client support calls done before you go and reach out to your support team to kind of find out what the best fit for you or to help work with your team but you know when we're there it's it's not a time to be like out coaching a client when general session is happening and dr anderson's teaching from the main stage because that's you know might be that next golden nugget that you might need to hear or someone on your team might need to hear so just think about that and when you're at an event like this really watch the leaders watch what they're doing um that's one of the things that brad always taught me and it has definitely um meant a lot but just really be present help your team set up their game plan for travel uh for sure pull in your support team because we are all here and want to help. And so, you know, who's coming with you and what are the logistics of attending? That is one of the things that I know, and I'm super thankful Brad didn't give up on me my first convention five years ago because I had said no. And I had said no just because I was already working the four days of convention. And, um, but then when he said, you know, really, what would it take? What would it really take to come? Um, and, you know, hearing that, you know, in his voice, and I also heard it straight from Dr. A, you know, really, what would it take to get there? You know, really, it's just a flight, it's registration and a hotel room. Okay, so you guys definitely, a lot of us already probably have groups of hotel rooms booked. So reach out to your support team. If you've got new um, people on your team or friends and family or pre clients that want to come, like, let's fill that whole hotel. Like, pack them in. We can do four. I've heard bathtubs are really comfortable. I don't know. <laughs> Some people like we really, you can fit a roll away bed in there, but so the cost of splitting a hotel room could be anywhere from like 30 to $75 total. And you guys, how many out there have free hotel room nights already? Okay. A lot of people on this team have free hotel room nights. So that's going to make it even less. And then you've got flights. And right about now, right about the four week mark is a great time to find flights for convention. Um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are great days to find flights. So guess what? Tuesday's coming up tomorrow. So maybe we could check some flights and help some people on our teams get there from wherever they're at. And um, associate director, gosh, that's really doable. Even if someone's just coming in and getting started as a new coach in the last few weeks or even heck this week and someone really wants to go. Uh, they could earn a free registration to convention. So I would say if, if, have you had a conversation with everyone on your heart about this event? Number one, are we going for sure? And then who's coming with us? And you know, if it's a no, it's probably that they just don't know enough and they don't know what they could be missing or what this event um, is all about. So if you've got someone that's really on your heart that you'd like to bring with you or a few people, reach out to your support team. Over the last few weeks, we've been doing lots of three-way Zooms with people, clients, pre-clients, pre-coaches, and brand new coaches. And guess what? We've got another five or 10 people like booking their tickets. Like even in this last week, we've had a ton of new people decide to come with us and we've got a huge block of rooms and we're planning on filling them all. So, um, we just love to have the more people, the more, uh, the merrier because we're a pretty awesome, fun group of people and we want all of you there with us. Um, 
So anyways, that's my spiel on convention, but I'm stinking excited about it. And we're really at the 30 day countdown. So I don't know, Brad, anything else to add that um, I might have missed on this awesome event? It only comes around once a year. So. Oh, you're muted. Thanks for there you go. everybody needs help. That's why we have support. So, um, no, that's really good. Uh, national convention. I mean, this is why we talk about on this call. I mean, I loved how you hit on, you know, who's coming with you and the layout of it and things that will help you learn. And many of you guys, it's your first convention. So congrats for all those people that are that way. And, um, you know, mostly I just want to give you guys one last thing to offer people. I give out the same, um, you know, guaranteed Dr. A does encourage all of your coaches to go to convention because it's a direct representation of, you know, where, you know, who's going to, focus on growing this and the ripple effect this year. I will give you the same guarantee that Dr. Ray hands out every year. If you go to a convention, you know, or, or people on your team, if they, if it's not, if they are upset that they went after it and they think it wasn't worth the trip, I will refund their trip for them. That's how confident I am in national convention. Cause so many of you guys, you know, wouldn't be here if a few people didn't make the decision to go along the way. So thank you, Don, for that. Guys, remember to always have fun. You know, this is, this is not about being too seriously. That's why, it's not, I mean, it is a business that you want to treat like how Susan described it, but really at the end of the day, it's fun and it's purpose. So remember that with your leadership mind. And with that being said, guys, remember that, you know, we talk about a lot of things that help us grow. Thank you, Lori, for the reminder about creating referrals, Don about convention and who we're bringing, Susan about what it is we have in our hands and looking at our business like that. Like, are we treating it that way? Are we treating it like, you know, what's possible and that's how we're talking about it? Or are we treating it like the thing that get, we get to when we have time? Because guys, you know, over five years, what can change for us and what can change for lives around us if we take it seriously? So guys, got to congratulate all of you guys and uh, keep moving your business forward, pouring into others. And this is just a reminder, you know, have your months planned out and be purposeful in everything you do every single day. So with that being said, congrats. So thankful to be partnered for you awesome guys or with you awesome guys. And let's go be on purpose this week. Talk to you guys later.